better with Kinect for Xbox 360. Well, we're here. With the remake dropping soon, it was time to finish what I started. Dead Space 3 is a... action shooter made by Visceral Games and published by EA. Or should that be ruined by? After going through the first two, I felt struck by some strange obligation to face Dead Space 3 to get a full grasp of what happened with the series, despite knowing that the game was as well received as a horrible illness by fan and critic alike. Sick is an apt way to describe the whole game, as the experience does seem to have been tainted by some horrible viruses that were being passed around by the worst company America winners at the time. I knew all this. I felt I was prepared for all this. But I still came away shocked just how bad Dead Space 3 actually is. Now it's not the worst game I've ever played, far from it really, and I'd actually like to get to cover some of those games one day, but I've never seen a game that feels like it hates its own skin so much, that it curses its own existence at every turn. You can say some parts are cool, but the whole package is a mess. This video might be a little different to normal, a little bit more loosey-goosey, but I feel it has to be this way. I'm trying to perform an autopsy on something I'm only vaguely sure was human at some point. So let's just dig our scalpels in and deal with whatever we find as we go. We start things off with a prologue that I completely forgot was here until I started rewatching my footage while writing the script. It shows two characters having some exciting adventures on a snowy planet before they both die. I don't really know why this is here. Was it to establish some kind of mystery? What happened to this planet and all these people? Why did that guy go crazy? We know the answer. The answer is necromorphs. This is the third game in the series, guys. Now we go to the actual start of this game, on Earth's lunar colony. 200 years later? That was two centuries ago, I guess. Kinda looked no different technologically to the rest of the series, but... Whatever. The game is some years after Dead Space 2, and in between games, our protagonist Isaac and his fellow space station escapee Ellie started a relationship, and then also broke up. Isaac is apparently taking this very badly, and he's proceeding to Max Payne 3 around his apartment. Does that say Big Bad Daddy's Whiskey? Suddenly, he is recruited by James Vega from Mass Effect 3 and Chip Hazard from Small Soldiers to go on another mission involving the enigmatic alien markers. With the promise that his old flame is going to be there, Isaac agrees to come along. Alright, premise set up, let's see what they've done with the gameplay. This is your first impression of the game as Isaac, shooting soldiers from behind cover. Well, I guess that's why the prologue was there. To show that there was still some dead space in this game, so people don't immediately turn the game off and return it. Hang in there a little while longer, and then you'll get to the game you want instead of Gears of War. Oh, I love hanging out with these military men talking military talk. Alpha, Bravo, Niner, Oscar, my... Dead Space 3 has basically dropped almost all the ideas of being a horror title. It's just action now. I know Dead Space 2 was more action than the first, but it was still action horror. I had that spiel about the fun kinds of horror. It had big scary monsters to gore and maim violently. Not regular dudes to just shoot at. Even when we get to the monsters later, it's hitting different. Behind the scenes of the game, the mandate to move away from horror was put onto Visceral by EA, as well as several other aspects of the game, in order to broaden its appeal. You can read about it in Jason Schreier's book, Press Reset, or any of the hundred interviews ex-Visceral staff have done following EA's murder of their studio. Just another one for the pile. Apparently EA wanted Dead Space to be their next Star Wars, hence why it got so much spin-off material. And they spent so much on developing and advertising Dead Space 2 that it's still one of the most expensive games ever made. I don't know how profitable it was, but I think they should have got a refund on the marketing budget. If I ever see it somewhere, I, I will personally take a hammer and, and slam it. Your mom hates Dead Space 2. So now the game is playing like some kind of blockbuster action shooter that makes my eyes glaze over because frankly, 
the whole console generation was already swamped with this. You could tell me Kane and Lynch went to space on a cancelled third game, and I'd believe you. Bizarrely, on 360, the game had Kinect support, where you can say to reload a weapon, and the Kinect will read your words and your weapon will be reloaded. A process which takes much longer than just pressing a button. Little wonder why this feature existed for this and Mass Effect 3, and then nothing else. Oh god, EA ruined Mass Effect 3 as well, I forgot about that. In my Dead Space 2 video, I said it felt like the game was taking some inspiration from the Uncharted series. And I think they're going even further with that here. I mean, I skipped over that prologue, but there's a lot of climbing over debris and elaborate crumbling set pieces. The snowy environment too, maybe? Maybe. However, the inspiration, or at least the direction, feels like it's now clashing with the game's construction. In this city, you end up on a moving train set piece, which is obviously meant to be thrilling and tense, much like the moving train level from Uncharted 2. People love that level and remember it fondly. They even did it again in Uncharted Lost Legacy. However, the movement in Uncharted is loose and slick, like an otter swimming upstream, as Drake jumps and dives around, popping baddies on a wide open train. Meanwhile, in Dead Space 3, we're on a tiny, thin train in comparison, and we constantly have to go up and down ladders because there's no real way for your feet to leave the floor in this game, unless you're in zero gravity. Otter in a wide river versus a brick traveling through a brick-sized hallway. A lot of the movement and general game feel from Dead Space is pretty much the same as the last time around. They put this out in a few years, there was no way they could make an entirely new movement system for this sequel. But this becomes a problem now that the tone and the pace of the game has changed. It's awkward, and the pieces don't fit together. The terrorist attacks in the city are being caused by the unitologists from the previous games, and we meet their leader, Danik who kind of looks like a cross between Bill Nye and Enzo from Bayonetta. He wants to activate all of humanity's secret markers to join everyone in what he sees as the next phase in evolution or something. The key to stopping him though is following Ellie's distress signal in faraway space. Okay, simple enough. Isaac joins up with the Jarheads to make it over to where she is. I have to say, I kind of really like these space station sections. When we get here, things are dark and quiet, and the Dead Space game is finally looking like a Dead Space game now. Then we encounter the Necromorphs, who are ancient and creepy looking. It's actually really nicely atmospheric. Oh yeah, I haven't mentioned the game's co-op yet. Isaac is joined by the meathead we saw at the start, John Carver, who the other player will control. I played this with a buddy of mine, Tyler. Oh, where'd you go? Um, oh, there, oh, there I am. I was just out of frame. Oh, uh, you, you are also enjoying this set piece, just out of frame. <laughs> he also hadn't played Dead Space 3 before, and we were both excited to see what this game was actually like. Oh boy. <laughs> now, you might wonder how the game's tone and atmosphere might change with the addition of co-op in the game. The occasional nods towards horror, and its idea of having a serious story, told seriously by serious characters. How do they survive when this game is being played in co-op? Well, careful. They sound like a list of mine, Nekor. Why must you lower the tone? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Um, <laughs> this reads like a fucking Reddit horror story. <laughs> I am the Reaper. Not this one. This is really good. Bye. You bitch. <laughs> Carver, it's very important. You've got to swap me on the ass. Nice. <laughs> I really <laughs> <want you> <laughs> yeah, playing this game in co-op basically destroys any attempt at seriousness this game has. That's the one I went with too. Oh. Oh. Oh, how embarrassing. Oh, no. I'll, I'll change. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a game that does manage to carry its serious tone well, even in co-op. There are numerous examples of this, more than I could possibly name here. This game, however, doesn't quite manage that careful balance. It turns the whole thing into a wacky fun house. To the developer's credit, they made the most fun co-op game they could for the game that they were making. 
Please note how much work that qualifier is doing in that sentence. Can you see this? I know, but I can hear it. You have to catch it. Oh, you can't catch it. Oh, look at him. He's struggling. <laughs> He's struggling. We've been going for about just over an hour. What the fuck? Yeah. They just spawned in. <laughs> Oh, how spooky. Now we don't have to kill them. Jesus. You are holding a chair. You're holding what? a chair on my screen. I'm not on mine. You are molesting a chair right now. Okay, it's, it's, it's gone from you. I've seen people argue whether or not you should play this in solo or in co-op whether you should try and get whatever horror you can out of the solo experience, or have a good time with friends and the extra co-op stuff the whole game is basically designed around. I was going to play the game a second time on my own to get a definitive answer on that, but I realised on my run through the co-op that there is no correct option here. Either way, you're playing Dead Space 3, and thus, you lose. Even what fun I did have in the co-op, it felt like it was more akin to a bad movie night, laughing at rather than with the game. What? Oh, gotta get some bandages to you. Oh, you heavy thug. Oh, oh, put your back down, you're so heavy. Oh. This game is nearly 10 years old now, and there are far better co-op games available for you to play. So you'd be better off just sticking to them. After all, the game feels compromised by its sudden multiplayer sometimes. The level of interactivity in the environments is reduced, and wherever you go you are reminded of the limits of co-op. Two switches to operate so many doors in the game, and rooms are incredibly tight, presumably because they can't have the two of you be separated too far. So ladders are everywhere, instead of ramps or stairs, and it's super easy to block the other player without even intending to. Though, usually we did it on purpose. I can't get up the ladder because you're there. <laughs> Ladder blocked by partner. That's amazing. The game's even telling me to move out the way. Partner <laughs> needs more space! Exclamation mark. On top of that, I think the AI has also become dumber. Too many targets to focus on? Who knows? You gotta. The game might just be buggier than the others. I could fix the old frame rate problems, but stuff like this is beyond a simple mod. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Are you okay? Uh, you uh, died in a cutscene? <laughs> this isn't the worst implementation of forcing co-op into a game that I've seen from the era, but it's undeniable that the game feels somehow worse than the single player experiences that have come before. Also, why can two people use the weapon bench but only one person can use the armor booth at a time? I have to sit and wait for my partner to finish his fashion show before I can use it. Oh fuck off. <laughs> so overall, the moment to moment gameplay and the level design feels compromised compared to previous games. But maybe things will improve later on the planet, and we could still enjoy the story, right? Well, here's the thing. We meet up with Ellie at long last, and- What are you wearing? You didn't dress like that in Dead Space 2. You're a pilot, and you dress kinda practically. Like you may be expected of someone trying to break out of a monster attack. Here, we're just casually wearing the lowest cut red shirt I've seen. I don't even think that buttons up. Now, look, a lady can wear what she wants, but I think it's worth mentioning. We're on a derelict space station here, hundreds of years old. There are parts of this wreck which are depressurized with no oxygen, where if I were not in my special spacesuit, I'd be dead. And frankly, the whole place is falling apart, so any room could collapse in on itself at any moment. Not to mention all the necromorphs everywhere. And while I stomp around in my big heavy suit of armor, you're dressed up like an alternate costume for Ada Wong? Oh, uh, also, she's in a relationship with that military man. Whoops, forgot to say that, didn't we? Don't get jealous now, Isaac. Ellie is almost unrecognizable compared to the last game. It's still the same actress, but how the character is handled is 
completely different. Each of the Dead Space games were written by different people, but it's in this game, the game that had the most writers out of any of the games, that everything begins to feel really off. Did I just watch Isaac get into Yard? I pointed out odd inconsistencies earlier, but you haven't seen anything yet. And how Ellie is handled is maybe the worst part of the game's story. Nah, but I won't go too deep until we enter the spoiler section though. For now, let's head down to the planet. Here's where the fun begins. Three. This is where the fun begins. I was pretty impressed when I first dropped down, because I like it when the environment you're placed in changes up how you engage with the game. Down here on Santa's homeworld, you have to monitor your temperature while out in the open, warming yourself up by fires or by powering up generators inside buildings. I'm not sure humans can survive being that cold though, that's not how body temperature works. Enemies also appear from out of the snow and the whiteout storm all around you. It's really cool. Also, suspiciously, all of this is a lot like Lost Planet. Does anyone even remember those games? We kick the temperature thing in the head really quickly though. By getting the snowsuit upgrade, that nullifies the whole temperature aspect. Like not even an hour on the planet and it being cold is kind of irrelevant. I guess enemies still stay hidden in the snow sometimes. That's alright, I guess. And there's no shortage of ways to deal with them thanks to the other big feature in the game, weapon crafting. So long, rigidly defined but distinct guns, now every implement of death is modular and has to be made by you. Start with a frame, add on some kind of firepower, choose how you want it to shoot, and blammo, you made yourself a gun. To the game's credit, there are a shocking amount of guns you can make, and each gun is essentially two guns, as you create its primary fire and its secondary fire, so you can end up with some crazy combinations. It's actually enhanced by the co-op, as we both ended up doing a little show and tell to one another after we were done using the Builder Beretta workshop. Yeah, I also went with that. But I also have changed my lightning gun to be this. Oh my. The game does work with universal ammunition now to compensate for this system. What's the point of giving people plasma if no one's using it? If this system wasn't here and we still had the old singular weapons we pick up, it could have made for a fun system of sharing ammo and making sure we're both equipped differently so we can make the best use of it all. Hell, that's basically Resident Evil 5, but with this crafting in place, universal ammo was probably the right call to make, honestly. The system is really quite cool, and props to the developers for coming up with it. That said, I've seen some people say that the game is worth playing just for this, and to that, I have to disagree. Because, I must reiterate, the game around it just isn't good. The system is cool, but it's not worth going through all of this for. It is, at best, a saving lifeline of serotonin to keep you alive in what is otherwise a mind-numbing experience. It's also unbalanced, as some parts are also blatantly better than others. Kinesis rounds literally make my enemies slower as I shoot them, so I can keep shooting them. Why would I not have that? We'll also talk about the upgrade that both of us settled on at the end of the game a bit later. A weird and kind of bad change though is the actual upgrades for your weapons. They're just these little chips you put in for static boosts. In the old games you had a precious resource that could be used for upgrades, or you could save them to access valuable rooms. It was a really interesting choice being presented to the player. Now you just get showered with chips as you go through the game, getting better and better the further in you go. And those hidden rooms are opened with an item you can craft 20 of from the bench. How fun. Suits are also just given to you as you go through the game, sometimes without any diegetic reason. Just, here you go. God, some of these are pretty ugly too. I thought the welding mask was meant to be iconic. You put it on the cover of two. These look like they belong in a sci-fi splinter cell. Upgrading your rig is done with generic parts as well. I was fully upgraded in all fields by the end, something I don't know if I did in any other Dead Space game speaks to the ubiquity of these materials. Yeah, let's talk about parts now. You can find those while out and about in the game, and you can also deploy a scavenger drone to collect parts for you over a short period of time, which will then appear at a workbench. You sometimes have to pause and search out the best place to deploy your bots, so the system requires some engagement from you. Or you can purchase them as microtransactions. Now ain't that funny? <laughs> Funny. 
out of all the sins this game makes, this is one of its more prominent ones. Why have challenge or drama when you can just spend money and get everything you need instantly? Well, the weird thing is, is that I never felt like I needed the microtransactions. I was swamped with materials for most of the game, not to mention ammo and health. I guess if you're impatient at the very beginning, it might grab you? But as soon as you're planet side, you're probably stocked up. Another weird thing is that you can spend money pimping your scavenger drone. And again, I just don't see why anyone would. Why would I do that? What purpose does this have? Maybe EA was still in training on making the worst monetization systems known to man. They hadn't quite worked out how to elicit that sense of pride and accomplishment. Still, it baffles me that we do get so many parts, and so many opportunities to get parts. As well as showering us with ammo, health, and materials during the main path, you'll also get side quests as well. These are often very simple and short stories told with a few audio logs. If you want actual meaty content, these won't satisfy you beyond your ever-waning desire to get more crafting materials. Unless you're in co-op. Bizarrely, there are co-op only side missions, where I think they try to bring the horror back the hardest. It's also where your co-op partner gets almost all of his character developed. It's kind of funny to watch him in cutscenes where he'll just walk out of camera shots and he doesn't take part. Because they've got to make these cutscenes for solo and co-op, so was he here? Was he not? I don't know. Bye! In these missions they play around with what each player can see in some pretty fun ways. Oh, there she is right there. What? It's right there. I didn't see anything. Also, I don't see any fucking party hats. Are you serious? Where the are they? <laughs> They're all over the fucking place! I don't see the fucking presents, John. I don't You're see- You're aiming at them. No, I'm not aiming at presents. Uh, there's a make us whole sign on the wall there. Well, not sign, but drawing. That? Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but it actually says drink your Ovaltine. There's also moments where you have to be doing different things, such as when John's having some weird kooky vision, and Isaac has to defend him until he's done. I usually found a way to break these so that the necromorphs would spawn in a way that meant I could either take care of them easily or not have to bother at all. Necessary, as the game doesn't actually tell you what to do in these segments, if you're John. At least, according to my partner. I was having a coffee break. Either way, you get glimpses into John Carver's past that isn't actually very interesting at all. But it's at least slightly more filling than the other missions. I had to retake that line three times because I keep saying his name is John Carter, but no, it's Carver. Carter's the Mars guy. But again, I can't endorse this part of the game because, good god, are all the side quests the most standout examples of how padded this game feels. They are continuously copy and pasting environments throughout the game. The side missions are just where it's most noticeable. One time we left one side mission area and entered a different one into the exact same room we had just left. So many. Oh, this is the exact same fucking room. Yep. This is literally Side the room. Quest. This is literally the room you fought the marker in. It even has the the, the, the message. <laughs> I did that. Fucking Christ! Is this why, like, this door doesn't open because it does for another version of this I room? Think so. Just like for, this is Dragon Age Two. This is. Uh, what was the shitty Bethesda dungeon crawler? Hunted the Demon's Forge. <laughs> this game feels long. Too long. Granted, I said before we started that we should do every single side mission we came across. I wanted to be thorough, and that's how I tend to play games besides. Might have been a mistake. There's so much padding. So many arbitrary fetch quests to find things, to do other things. The other games indulged in this too, as you repaired X so you could later reach Y, but it never felt as draining as it does here. My final playtime with Dead Space 3 is 18 hours, which doesn't sound long, but it's twice the amount of time I spent in Dead Space 1 and 2, and there's just not enough meat to the game to make it feel like it's worth it. Not even combat could liven things up. 
The gun system can make for some cool and satisfying crafts, but the two of you with essentially eight weapons between you and a near infinite supply of ammo and health means nothing can really even begin to touch you. We actually both ended up taking the same weapon mods at the end, because there's an attachment to make yourself immune to splash damage from your own weapons. So make a rocket launcher and hey presto, you've just made a gun that deletes enemies and is at no risk to you. Useful if you really want to just be done with a game. Well. Also, a massively upgraded plasma cutter carried me throughout much of the game, since limbs are still the name of the game here, and the cutter's just one of the most efficient ways of doing it. I actually turned off the rotation axle and just added a second gun underneath. Why not? Plenty of ammo to go around, and I didn't feel like I was getting much use out of the rotator in the game. Maybe we would have had a more engaging time if we turned up the difficulty. This was on normal. I should have turned up the difficulty in Dead Space 1. I understand that now. However, that might have had the consequence of us playing Dead Space 3 for even longer. A chance that neither of us wanted to take. Wanna know how bad it got? The game tracks your progress in percentage, and we were watching it like a hawk, as eventually we both desperately wanted the game to hurry up and be over with. One time we both made bets on how much progress we made across a three hour session. How much that little ticker went up? I'm gonna say 88%. Okay, I'm gonna say, what were we at? We were at 64? 63, I think. One of the two. 73. Oh, that one hurt would hurt. Wouldn't it just? All right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to save and quit. You, fuck you. <laughs> oh, switch. You're going to hit switch. Oh! Nearly 14 hours in. <laughs> We've got to be done with the side stuff though, right? So like the next time we play, we'll just smash through it, right? I don't know, Sam. There's still a good 25% of the game left to go. There's still a quarter of the game left to go, Jack. Don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> There's one fourth of the game left for us to play. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I'm engineering my fucking limits. Also, the game makes you do a lot of climbing, and I really don't like the climbing. It's awkward to control, and the game makes you do so much of it as you go towards the end. I dreaded seeing another of these stupid hook stations. So many aspects of the gameplay actively demoralise you for all the reasons I've mentioned already, but if you wanted me to point out the worst part of the whole game, I'd say it's the story. I don't even think the stories of either the first two were terribly outstanding, though I thought 2's was really charming and fun. There's none of that here. Dead Space 3's story is actively choosing to be terrible, and betrays the whole series. It's not surprising the franchise stopped here. It feels like whoever was writing it actively hated working on it. I'm going to be getting into spoilers. Skip here if you don't want to see that, but... Frankly, you can already tell I'm not going to recommend the game. But it's up to you if you also want to endure an interactive experience that's akin to smoothing out the wrinkles on your brain with a hot iron. For those sticking around, let's go elbow deep into this carcass. Remember that this is an autopsy? RIP So we think this planet might be the Marker homeworld, and that somehow there might be a way to deactivate the Markers everywhere from here. We keep seeing turn it off from old survivors. Even Isaac is getting in on the tune. So maybe it's a sign from those who got too close to the madness. But frankly, I don't think anyone cares about that. You know what this plot needs? One of the most cringe-inducing love triangle subplots I've seen outside of the fucking Hobbit movies. Good to see you made it, Isaac. You know, maybe we should give you two some time alone, huh? It means for someone who's in the past, you're awfully glad to see him. We need him. This mission needs Come on, him. We need him or you need him. I hate this. I hate this. 
I absolutely hate this. Look at her separating them like, boys, stop fighting over me, stop. Oh, at least she put on a coat now and didn't just put on her winter bikini. Ellie's role in this is mostly relegated to telling us what to do and telling the horn dogs to calm down. Nobody but you really does anything in this game or has a character that exists outside of the present moment. Don't talk to me about comic books or other material. Something about the way the game quickly kills everyone on the team too just feels off mean-spirited even. People die in these games and that's fine, sometimes established characters, but something about this game just rubs me the wrong way. It's like a death just happens because a producer said so, or because the writer didn't know what to do with the character anymore and so just wrote, dies violently and needlessly. It's like a cheap cynical way to raise the stakes. <laughs> I don't feel like the sense of threat is larger or more prominent. If anything, I'm just annoyed the game didn't let me kill that monster in the several times I fought it at this point. It's a feeling of insincerity that rings throughout the game, and it makes you much less invested in the whole experience because of it. Dead Space 1 felt earnest in its portrayal of a crew fighting desperately to survive this threat. The characters were distinct and you had the feeling that each had their own goals outside of the mission, even outside of the portrayal twist. Dead Space 2 is charming and charismatic, it's well written, and the cast is given such a rounded feeling by giving everyone a human touch. People have their own things going on within this space station disaster, whether it's on a personal level or related to the wider intrigue, and it helps the whole game burn as bright as it does. No one is passive in that plot, everyone is moving and doing their own thing. Meanwhile, no one in Dead Space 3 feels real. The wider cast exists just to die, and the main characters within the plot feel like caricatures rather than people. It's subtle, but when you remove this relatability and sabotage how invested the player will be in your story, it makes everything else in the game feel worse. Whereas before I was thrilled with the action set pieces of Dead Space 2, in Dead Space 3 I don't care. It's just noise now, and frankly it doesn't feel like it matters who lives and dies. The best walking example for how bad these characters are is with Republican Space Ranger here, and how Commander Clown is an asshole, A cartoonishly huge asshole. The game wants you to hate him, but does so with the nuance and subtlety of being beaten to death by a screaming gorilla. Nothing he does is in the slightest bit believable, outside of him being a pantomime villain who walked into the wrong production. He's constantly disagreeing with people and starting fights in this life or death situation. Early on, he rings up Isaac on a private line to inform him, quote, Ellie is mine. Don't worry, he gets worse. All of this because he's jealous of Isaac getting some of Ellie's attention? Well that and he's blaming Isaac for keeping her here on this planet, when he clearly just wants to fly away and leave. You know, she also wants to save the galaxy cause that's where she lives. But Captain John Halo doesn't care, he rats us all out to the unitologists just so he can maybe weasel his way off world with Ellie. Do you see how ludicrously huge a jerk the game makes him? It's like to the point of parody. The previous games had a bit of nuance to the character dynamics at least. Ugh, the worst part about this is that because he ratted us out, I have to do more cover based shooting. God, what a bastard. Anyway, his plan doesn't work out and he just starts flipping out. Captain, Sergeant. This is all your fucking fault. She doesn't love you. What am I gonna tell Ellie? Hey. Tell it the truth. Now let's go. Ellie isn't happy we killed her boyfriend, but it's okay. She gets over it after like an hour or so. Can't blame her. Anyway, onto the actual plot of the game. We eventually get what we're looking for after a really obnoxious fetch quest. A research experiment called Rosetta. Meet Rosetta. Where's her face? 
doesn't have a face. It's not even a she. It's an it. Rosetta is an alien. What? What does that mean? I'll cut this down a bit. The alien you just reassembled reveals that this isn't the marker homeworld. It's just another world that found a marker a long time ago. They awakened their marker and triggered its power that apparently makes a moon, which eats people. And that's what the markers all do. They make moons that eat people. Because they're not moons, they're actually giant necromorphs. The aliens froze this planet with a machine to stop the moon, which also powered down all markers everywhere? I think? It still seems bad. The signal that we followed here was actually from the moon. They wanted everyone to disable the machine. So the turn it off messages were actually from the moon telling marker crazy people to turn off the machine that froze the planet. So markers can continue eating people across the galaxy, which I thought they were doing before, but I guess not as effectively as they could. And that device is what will do it, which Danik was going to destroy, but now he kind of wants it. This is insane nonsense, and I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan. I don't have an easy through line to follow on the plot here. It's kind of just crazy gibberish all the way down. Anyway. Danik now wants to turn off the machine and then the room is exploding because drama. Isaac and Carver flee, but... God. Ellie, come on! Ellie! It's no good! It's moving too fast! Isaac, do it. Just do it! Isaac! I love you. <laughs> Fuck this scene. Fuck this scene. Hey, remember this bit from Dead Space 2? You complete bastard! Was this your great plan? Dump me off and die? Yeah, well here's another one. I'm crashing through the roof to get you. Now move your ass. Wait, Ellie, it's too late. So through the station. Yeah, well you don't really have a say this time. Heads up! sun comes up with their lives on the line. Alive! <laughs> oh no, shit. I failed, I failed the quick time of that because it was too stupid. So we've gone from someone who rejects the idea of the noble sacrifice by the big hero man to someone who just meekly accepts their fate. Dead Space 2 Ellie would have made that jump. Would have tried at least. Whoever the hell wrote her in this game just had actively the worst ideas about how to write her. Like they actually had some kind of vendetta against her and just meticulously robbed her of all agency she had earned in the second game. Now I hesitate to call this sexist or misogynistic as who knows out of all these writers who was in charge of writing her, but the complete disregard of who she was from the second game really doesn't paint a positive light on things. The only way things could get worse is if she got captured by the main villain. So somehow she survives that room and is immediately captured by Danik. What? Uh... Don't worry, Princess Ellie. Clarkio is coming to save you. Wahoo! Oh yeah, we're inside the alien machine now. This whole environment is probably the coolest thing in this game. I mean, at least superficially. It looks cool and the puzzles are actually pretty neat. I like how we have to do some alien language decoding, sorta. But my partner and I are so exhausted at this point and we're actually just running past encounters we can't be bothered with now. The game needs to end. Watch a movie. You see, the natives of this planet constructed a machine that <laughs> You're getting your fucking chips out. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
You know what? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Not before John Carver has the conclusion to his character arc, though, which was... Um... He felt guilty his family died due to a marker incident that claimed the whole planet, I guess. I helped get us this far. And that's close enough for all this to count, right? Count for what? For... I don't know, just... All the bad I've done. Oh, shut up, Carver. You're a good man. <laughs> no, I'm not. I alienated myself. Ah, but now he wants us to get this done, no matter what. So then, why the fuck, in the final showdown where Danik is holding Ellie hostage and wants the key to turn off the machine, does this happen? Don't let it all go dark, Isaac. There's more than one kind of right. No! What the fuck? Uh, why? You're a good man. No, I'm not. Why don't you just shoot him? Why don't you just stasis and then shoot? Things are getting pretty grim, so let's send the delicate little Ellie away. When I finish this, it's all going down. Everything. You have to go. I want you to take it head for home. Don't come back for me. We both know I'm not going home. Ah, I get it. Gotcha. Definitely don't come in and save us both from the collapsing moon and planet at the last second like a hero would. Definitely don't, Ellie. How did she get there that fast? Anyway, we throw markers at the moon eyes until it dies. It's not worth talking about any more than that. Rip. Come on. Any minute now. Any minute now. Oh, you're kidding me. She just did as she was told and took the ship away? <laughs> She just sat there and cried on the ship instead of rescuing? So clear the station. Yeah, well, you don't really have a say this time. Heads up. I don't care if it's unfeasible or illogical to rescue them from a falling moon. It would have been cooler. And more fitting of Dead Space 2 Ellie to try and do it anyway. And then she just leaves. She leaves. That's the last time we see her. As she goes away, just as Isaac told her to. And then the credits begin to roll. I hate this ending. I hate everything it stands for. Not because it's bittersweet or because I didn't get my fairy tale happy ending, but because it feels like a betrayal. It's like the same actors appeared and began playing different characters in a different game, and yet it calls itself Dead Space. And the worst part about this ending is that it's not actually the ending of Dead Space 3. Ellie. Dead Space 3 got DLC. Story DLC that is set after the events of the main game. How? When Isaac and John McMuscles very clearly died? Good question. What about the alien machine? It froze the planet. It pulled a moon out of the sky. We don't know what that technology can do. So that's it, we were saved by fucking aliens? I quit trying to make sense of it all back on the Ishimura. Somehow, Isaac has returned. Oh, you bitch. I get the engineering suit, baby. This DLC is very short. Short enough that we beat it in one session. 
thank god. It has you essentially going through a good slice of the main game's areas backwards, so there's not so much to talk about. It does feel like whoever was working on it was trying to put back some of the horror that was missing from the main game, perhaps as a response to how the game was received. You get the odd hallucination and even have to fight them and wonder what is real and what is fake. Even Captain Chiseljaw returns briefly. It's all a little unrefined, but I think I appreciate the effort. It makes it feel different at the very least. The plot is about the journey back home. However, our heroes keep receiving visions that's building up conflict between them. Carver wants to go home, but Isaac doesn't, fearing the surviving necromorphs will follow them to Earth. It all builds to a moment where the disagreement overtakes you, and we turn from co-op to competitive. No, not really. You know, unlike other games that do exactly that, it's kind of half-baked here, and all you do is just fight hallucinations of the other player that are AI controlled. I really thought they were going to do it, and have a different ending maybe based on who wins, but sadly no. Well, I guess they just really believed in this game's ending. So Isaac and John settle their differences, and manage to fly out to Earth and try calling home. Weirdly, there's no response. United Mining Traffic Flow, do you copy? Lunar Flight Control, this is CMS Terra Nova. Does anyone read us out here? I gave Dead Space 1 shit for its sudden screamer ending, but Dead Space 3 tops it by having two different endings that are even worse than that. And that's it, by the way. There's nothing following up on what happened afterwards. The series died after this. It's not hard to see why. The victim died by publisher interference. Dead Space 3 is bad. I don't recommend playing it. Even if you've already played the first two, take two's perfect ending and pretend that's how the story closes. Any moments of tomfoolery or fun you saw here were countered by ten times the amount of tiredness, weariness, and nausea encountered when playing through this misshapen homunculus of a video game. I'd like to thank my buddy Tyler for going through it with me, because I might have died if I had to see all of this solo. It was reassuring to have someone else tell me I'm not crazy. They see it all too, and it's just as bad as I think. So now I think I can see why some people are mad about EA remaking Dead Space, after they, the publisher, ruined this game spectacularly. It is probably one of the worst instances of publisher interference for a released game that I can think of, and that's a field that already has some stiff competition from the exact same publisher. Now they want to come back and show us a Dead Space remake? I dunno, I mean... I guess the developer's motive didn't have anything to do with what happened here? I'll be curious to see what they end up doing there. I mean, the gameplay looks pretty faithful. It'll probably be a better time than the Callisto Protocol. So we'll just have to see- Isaac, what have they done to your face? Hi there. Thank you for watching this elongated mental breakdown. This was a bit of an ordeal. First I was getting COVID before it all started, and then the script just getting bigger and bigger. And now, as you can probably hear, at the end of production, I'm ill again. So that's nice. Yay. I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting me and for their well wishes when I was ill. Patrons get access to updates on what I'm doing and could also submit questions for Q&A segments at the end of videos. We'll get into the questions right now. What is your favourite video game, and which game do you like the least? My favourite video game is Amori, though there have been other contenders over the years. But which video game I like the least? In this video, I teased some very, very bad games, and I would like to talk about them at some point. But they're not what I'd say I'd like the least, because I get enjoyment about how bad they are. Like, they are some of the worst I've ever played, but that's also kind of fun. But like, game I like the least, I'd say maybe... 
Aliens Colonial Marines. I don't think there's anything really good about that game. It's just a mess all the way through. Who knows, maybe I'll talk about that again at some point. I also played that in co-op back in the day, so... Ooh, maybe I'm just drawn to these games. Anyway, I really need to pass out right now. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time when I'm feeling a bit better. I've got to cut all the coughs out of this recording. Thank you.